here we are on the hard standing at Swanwick Marina and I've just spent the day actually fouling the boat. Oh yes, I am covered in paint, dry, dusty paint. You may have heard it many times before that the boat owner will spend 10% of the value of their boat every year in order to keep that boat. Well, it might be true for some people, but that's not what I've found to be the case. Indeed, if I did have to spend 10% of the value of this boat every year, I just could not afford to run it. The first thing to do when the boat comes out of the water is pay to have a professional jet wash it for you. You have to get the jet washer on the hull before the hull dries. If you don't, then the marine growth that is left on there will dry rock hard. Getting a jet wash done at this stage will save many, many hours of rubbing down. Well, that's four years and I think, apart from the fact that I've cleaned the props, that's remarkable. Um, there's very little fouling on it. What you can see here is the red anti-foul, which was there. I painted over four years ago with my blue, and uh, all the blue has come off. I've taken a 10 day pit stop package here at Swanwick Marina that gives me a couple of weekends and a full week in between in order to do the work that I need to do. Well, the boat is still in the slings but we can have a quick look around to see what is involved this time. The hull looks amazing, it's clean. It, the props are obviously clean because I only cleaned them last week and the keel core is clean of course. It's a bit of a beast when it's out of the water, there's no denying that, there's a lot of boat here. This is my first real glance to see what state the boat is in, to see what sort of task is involved in the next few days. So you the four of them Well done, Mikey. Start in Mikey. Mr. Christ, thank I'll tell you something, it's a lot easier doing this thing on a storm than the water. Oh yeah. Okay. Here we are, this is the folding prop. And it's out the water. And you can see here, these gears, they get totally fouled up. That's what it does. A little stiff. It stiffened up since yesterday. It stiffened up since yesterday. And all the uh, when a boat comes out of the water, all the, uh, the fouling goes rock hard. And uh, that's why it gets jet washed as soon as it comes out. It comes off a lot easier. But uh, yeah, the bane of my life. This thing. There we go. Okay, four years in the water, and these are the anodes on my wing engine prop shaft. They've been working 
they were still working fine. I saw some life left in them, but there's, they need changing. Yes. I'm in a noisy boat yard, doing my scraping. This is definitely easier, sitting on a stool than under the water. Yeah, this, uh, I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> well, guess what I've been doing? You guessed it. It's all called fun of boat ownership. Okay, now this is because I want to have a nice boat but I can't afford to buy a nice boat and also pay someone else to maintain it for me. So Muggins here has to do all the donkey work himself, which means scraping off the old anti-fouling. Well, at least the bit that the jet wash didn't get out. So I spent all day and I thought I'd be really careful and stay clean. But that didn't work out, so I thought I might as well just stay late and finish the job. And well, just look at the state of me. I think it's uh, jump in the shower before I get in the car because I don't want a, a blue interior to my car. <laughs> and it all goes up your nose. Crikey. Anyway, such is the fun of only a boat. After the jet wash is complete, then you have to sand off any remaining marine growth with very coarse grit paper. I find that 60 grade grit is ideal for this. This is a bow thrust. Uh, I've, uh, I'm going to take these blades off and clean inside the tunnel and put new anodes on here. There we go. Same with the stern buster. Anti-fouling time. Wonderlust is on the hard standing out of Swanwick Marina, just by the River Hamble. And uh, yes, I've just started to, to take the, uh, the paint off and ready to put the new anti-fouling on. When you've done all your sanding, you need to wash off all the paint dust. You need to use some detergent, otherwise you won't get it all off. After it's dried, the hole should be dust free and that's now ready to paint over the old anti -fouling. In my case, I know I'm using a compatible paint because I'm painting over with the same paint that I used before. But you must check that your paint is compatible. I've used a whole tin of paint, that's a 2.5 litre tin, on each side of the boat. And that's a total of four tins of you had to use. Now this is where I saved money. I'm still using a good brand of paint, but it's one of the cheapest in their range. I've gone, I've gone for an ablative or self-eroding type. Well, it's looking better. It's, uh, it's looking like it's been painted. Well, that is, of course, until you walk over here and you realize I've only done half. Yeah, only done half. I've used a whole tin of paint up on one side and I've got to do the other side tomorrow. And then all again, two coats needed. So, uh, yep, it's, uh, it's all good fun. There we go. That's one side painted, one coat. That's another side and another whole coat we go yet. And uh, let's see how long it takes me. Now I've been in the water now for four years with this boat and it's come out looking like it's only been in for one. So the cost of ultrasonic anti-fouling has been redeemed in part by the smaller cost of the paint involved. And this is the second time I've done this boat, so that's probably £1,500 of paint that I've saved alone. When you anti-foul a boat, you're going to need to put a couple of coats on. Now the first coat takes a very long time. In this case, it was four or five hours. That's for one side of the hull. Here we go. This is uh, day two of painting. So. I put the first coat on the uh, starboard side, which takes forever. It took me uh, a few hours, but then 
Now for the second coat on the port side, which went on real quick, only about an hour ago, the whole side. So uh, it just shows that first coat really saps up the paint. So uh, I'm just going to need to wait for the first, the other side to dry a little bit more before I uh, finish up this afternoon. But hey, we're looking a lot better, aren't we? Hey, these are the bow thrusters. Now, these are quite meaty. It's like 10 horsepower put just over. Uh, contra rotating propellers. Now the thing is, I need to take these off to uh, to, to put some anti foul on the blade to clean the tunnel. Um, but you must remember on these to put the right propeller on the right side because they're, they're different. You put them on the wrong around, you put the left one on this side because it will fit, but you'll end up going left when you press on the lever to, lever to go right. So you must either mark them or remember which way they go around. Okay, this is the uh, propeller anode on this uh, large, uh, what size are we? 32 inch propeller. Okay, that's the old one. And that's the new one. <laughs> There's a bit of difference, eh? I would say that's, um, I would say that's definitely needed changing. We couldn't have gone any longer with that anode. Otherwise my propeller would start eating away. So I must remember this one is the port side, okay? Both bolts undo conventionally, right hand thread. But this propeller is backwards. This is the port side. As you can see, it's different to that one. This time round, I'm using a better quality paint on my exposed stern gear. This is uh, an epoxy primer going on now. Very messy. Well, that's the bound thruster. A new aluminium anode. A bit of Loctite. anti the propellers. They're a composite made of like uh, fiberglass with a brass insert. Well, that ends another long day. That's a uh, primer, two coats of epoxy primer on the, uh, the bare metal for the propellers and the, uh, the skeg. Uh, what else have we done? We've done the, uh, the bow thruster and the stern thruster. Uh, clean out the tunnels, um, anti foul them, clean the blades, the blades off, clean them, anti foul them, new anodes on. Yeah, uh, it doesn't sound like a lot, does it? But, uh, oh, Painted a few uh, pearl fittings and the day's gone. It just takes forever and this stuff is horrible. Sticky, epoxy paint. Yuck. Anyway, we're getting there. Almost done. With the boat out of the water, I'm taking the opportunity to give her a good polish. I'm doing the hull only. The top size is best done when it's in the water. Now it's very hard to polish a hole properly when it's in the water. You can't go down to the water line, and not with power tools. Electricity and water really don't mix very well. Now on the hard standing, the polishing job is still difficult because of the access. It's quite a long way off the ground. The boatyards don't let you use their ladders and they have a strict policy of that. So you have to bring your own ladders or trestles and st steps with you. Well, this is it. This is the, uh, the last day I'm going to be working hard on the boat. Um, this is uh, my second full day of polishing and I'm absolutely knackered. I've, uh, I've only done this one side um, and not even to the top, only to about here because I can't reach any higher. Uh, the other side here, I'm just going to do what I can and the rest has to be done in the water because I'm just worn out. It's a lot of effort. Well, it's a big boat to clean. Okay, so we've, uh, this is the bow thruster. A new aluminium anodes go on here. The blades have been taken off. 
tunnel cleaned. It's all been anti-fouled, re-greased, put back together, locked tight, you name it, ready to go. Hopefully I've got the blades on the right way around, but uh, if not, I'll have to do some wiring changes. <laughs> Fingers crossed on that one. This is my keel cooler, which keeps the main engine uh, cool. And that basically, uh, you, you shouldn't anti-foul this because it interferes with the, the heat transfer between the green uh, bronze here and the seawater. So if you've anti-fouled it, it just acts like a blanket and, uh, and insulates the radiator. So it does get credit up. Um, but I have to keep going down and cleaning it every year if we don't make, uh, you know, get enough air water flow over it to keep it clean. So uh, hey, scrape it off, give it a squirt with the uh, brick acid and um, ready to go in. I can keep the anodes on. These are extra big anodes I've put on and they're fine. The, uh, the ones that are supposed to go on are too small. They can eat it away in no time. So these are the stabiliser fins. These are I had two five twos or two point five square meters uh, each, uh, and uh, every few years the seal here that goes through the hole needs to be changed, and that's a, a specialist job. You need special tools to do it. You have to uh, basically unbolt at the bottom and then hydraulically separate the two and put a new seal on. Uh, so um, I are doing that on Monday, the day before we get launched. It's the only thing I'm not actually doing myself under the boat here. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see him do it. Okay, I've picked up an extra job here. I didn't know I had to do. Um, but anyway, these are, this is the, the wing propeller. Um, and in here, it's supposed to be a rubber bushing, which uh, stops the blades from going too far forward and stops it and make a big clonk when they operate. But uh, it works okay without it, but there's one turning up on Monday, hopefully, and if it does, then uh, it'll be fitted. If not, it won't, and uh, it'll be done next time. But uh, yeah, it needs to be greased up, but to, in order to fit these bushings, the, all the blades have to come off. So I'm not gonna grease it up just yet because it'd be a right mess if I do have to take it off. Um, the main prop in this gig, it's, uh, it's now had its, uh, its fourth coat of uh, anti-foul treatment on it. This is the top coat, this is the, the uh, what was it called? Hempel, I think Cynic, I think. Cynic. Hempel Cynic propeller. That's a kit. Put an epoxy one, epoxy two coat paint on first, and then a, then a bonding coat, and then the top coat, and it's a uh, horrible stuff to put on. It goes everywhere. Uh, let's see how this works. It's weird, it's quite sticky. It's like, um, Rubbery, almost weird, but uh, hopefully the little critters won't enjoy living on that. Uh, Cost about 120 quid to paint these propellers, and just in paint alone. So hopefully it will do the job. Looking at the boat, you don't realise there is actually a stern thruster. And it's up in this tunnel here, same as the front. So this has been uh, done. One last little job I managed to do is to investigate this log impeller, which is uh, here. And you can see that's spinning nice and freely. So I've, uh, I've actually anti fouled the, the blades on there this time. Um, with any luck, that, uh, that should stay clear. We have an ultrasonic transducer here, right, about, right next to it. So. Really, I can't do much more than that, apart from, you know, not fit it, but it's there for a job. And measures our speed through the water. Uh, so we can calculate actually uh, strength of tides, so with the current, um, but compare that with the speed over ground from the GPS, and it tells you uh, what the drift is. So this thing can actually be taken out whilst the boat is in the water, but as you can see, it is under the waterline and probably a few feet under the waterline, so you would get a lot of water coming up inside. There's a flap inside which shuts off. If you trust it, that will allow you to, to take that out in the water to inspect it and clean it. But uh, I'm not brave enough to do that, so 
I wait until the boat is out is out of the water before I clean this. So uh, it's now rotating nice and freely. But there we are. That's the log impeller. She told. Now we have to stand well back because uh, you can give, you can go with a bit of a bang apparently. So uh, that's why there's a. a, a a long hydraulic pipe there so you can stand well back when he pumps it up. These things can get up to about 6,000 pounds square inch of uh, hydraulic pressure. So it's pumped in there and it'll just fly off. Perfect. That's how we do that. It said the other side took 3,000, about 3,000 pounds square inch to, uh, to release it, but he's known some that take 35,000, some big ones. Um, he said that some can weigh up to about six tons each. I mean, that was heavy enough. That's apparently made a solid nylon. Uh, trust me, it was quite heavy. Uh, and these are the smallest ones they do, they get a lot bigger. Tougher. Well, all that effort to get to this point. These are the seals on the Nyad stabilizers. Two of these each side. Okay. Okay, today is launch day and the part for my gory prop did not turn up. So the rubber bushings to stop it banging like that. That's all they do. Didn't turn up, but we're launching anyway. Um, I've now greased it up, so it's nice and free. It won't stay like that, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm just doing one final check around the boat to make sure everything's fine. The stabilizers are now back on. My had have been back and they've uh, reattached these. It took three people, two to hold it and one to do the bolt up. Um, to make sure it was straight, so I've anti fouled in between here whilst I had the opportunity, whilst they're off. Uh, I've just put some grease in all the seacocks. Just get to the shore power. I might just run around with a bit of paint because I've had the paint in it anyway for the, uh, the pads when they take these supports away. They give me some time to run around with a roller to, to, uh, to put some paint on these pads, so I might as well just as I'm waiting around. Stick some more around the boot line, you never have enough. Um, and that's it. Log impellers back in, so there are no holes in the boat, we should float. Uh, and everything is done. Uh, we're polished all the way around, apart from the very top bit that I couldn't reach. But I can do that when it's in the water. Um, all systems go. I was wondering what this spanner was for, and now I found out. It's removing the gory prop. Another mystery solved. But of course, we have a problem, a new problem. Problems always seem to surface. We're being launched at lunchtime, but we have no space for us at this marina. They have no space for us at the marina opposite. And so I'm having to go back to Hasler, where there is space, just about. I've found up there is space, but I need to get the boat there this afternoon. So I've had to hire a skipper or helping hand because I'll be doing the skipping to take us on a two hour journey to Hasler. So more expense, more hassle. Um, but uh, yeah, as I always say, such is the fun of boat ownership. Uh, I'd be glad to be back in the water and we'll be ready to, uh, to go on the rest of our cruise. So brilliant. Okay, it's just been lifted onto the straps and now it's just a case of uh, painting the patches. Ah, it's that simple. Yeah. 
There we go. See the smile on my face. Back in the water where we belong and we're nicely afloat. Everything has worked out well. Uh, we, however, cannot stay here. Uh, they have no space for it at this marina either. So um, I am going back to Hasler, which is two hours upriver uh, in Portsmouth Harbour. And uh, to do that, I've had to enlist a, another helping hand uh, to pay for a, a crew member to join me. So uh, um, such is the fun of boating. <laughs> but it's, it's great. We're, we're afloat. Everything works, and the boat looks nice and clean, and uh, yeah, wonderful. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. A video on how to do it yourself and save money on the Nordhav. Now, all I have to do now is head two hours up the Hamble to Portsmouth Harbour, where we're going to Hasler Marina. If you enjoyed this video, then please do subscribe. We have some more videos coming up of this cruise. We're heading along the south coast, we're going to Guernsey, and we'll eventually end up at our home port in Portishead.